What if you chose to become a Tibetan monk? You are confined in a tiny room. Your only source of light comes through a narrow slit in the wall where you get your food from, which happens just once a week. And your meals consist of a mug of water and a bowl of barley flour. This is the only day you are able to get any fresh air too. Soon, your muscles will atrophy and you will start going blind. With your now extra sensitive hearing, you'll be able to hear the blood running through your veins. You will enter into a state of trance from oxygen deprivation and only then will you know spiritual freedom. And no, this is not a beginning of a horror film. You just became a Tibetan monk. Prepare to be amazed. Now let's figure out how you've come to this. Together with over 46,000 monks, you have voluntarily accepted a life of isolation. You were seven years old then. You have been exploring the wisdom of Buddhism for 18 years now and studied 253 vows. Throughout all these years, you had in your possession a blanket, a bowl, and a set of warm clothes. Sometimes you used a smartphone or a tablet since it's more effective to do charitable work. Like that last time in 2013 when you helped collect about $3,900 in five days through WeChat to pay the medical bills of a one-year-old Losang Sanji who had fractured his skull. We are very curious to know which soul possession you take with you to the monastery if you became a Tibetan monk. Yes, you can choose just one. You've been able to temper your spirit and achieve enlightenment thanks to the clearly structured daily plan. Eight hours of spiritual practice, eight hours of physical work and working out, and eight hours of rest, food, and sleep. To resist the temptation of gluttony, your daily ratios consist of rice, vegetables, fruits, and Tibetan bread. But your new favorite drink is the Tibetan tea made with salt, yak milk, and yak butter. This recipe is over 1,400 years old. We think that adding some marshmallows to it would be great. To protect you from vain thoughts and the desires to pursue fashion, Buddha left instructions in Vinavya Pitaka. You have to shave your head every two months so that you aren't tempted to grow your luscious locks. Mind you, monks can't wash, comb, or dye their hair. Very interesting, no doubt, but one question still remains unanswered. How did you find yourself in that small, enclosed space? Well, after finishing your studies, you had several options before you. You could have stayed in the monastery, go back to the outside world, or become a hermit or a recluse. That last option involves being sealed in a small hut. Obviously, you were adamant about that last one. Is it a good thing to be a Tibetan monk? We think so, but you must be ready for a life without Ifland videos. And where's the good in that? While you're making up your mind, watch our next video and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Otherwise, you'll miss the most interesting things.